said, my name is Joel Isicello. I'm the Ray Traffic Engineer. Uh, we're based out of Ashland, uh, which includes Huron County. Um, so just wanted to come and talk to you in general about roundabouts and uh, if you have any other general questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, like uh, Lindsay said, you know, if a project does move forward in Huron County, uh, we will come out with public meetings at that time where we can answer more specific questions. We'll have more detailed plan information at that point uh, where we'll be able to answer more specific questions for you. So what is a roundabout? Basically a roundabout is a circular intersection which flows counterclockwise um, around a central island area. You know, some uh, locations where roundabouts might be appropriate, you know, they can be appropriate high crash rate locations, intersections with uh, large traffic delays, either busy or intersections, uh, intersections that might have complex geometry, like skewed intersections, uh, multiple lanes, like five, six lane type intersections. Um, and anywhere where you have high left turn volumes, um, if you can do it with a roundabout versus having dual left turn lanes and signalized intersections, sometimes that works better. So some of the characteristics of a roundabout, uh, again, they're circular in shape, they're channelized on the approaches, what's called a splitter island. So as vehicles approach the roundabout, uh, we put in some horizontal curvature to slow the traffic down. Um, again, the traffic flow in the roundabout itself is counterclockwise. Uh, it's, always, it's usually yield on entry, so all the legs of the intersection are the roundabout would yield as they enter the roundabout itself. Uh, and then vehicles that are in the roundabout have the right of way uh, to go around. Um, again, the geometric curvature that I just mentioned on the splitter islands, that's kind of what creates that low speed environment. So again, you know, they're designed to slow traffic down gradually as they approach the roundabout. Uh, so by the time they get to the uh, entry point of the roundabout itself, they're doing about 20 to 25 miles an hour. Um, so basically a roundabout turns every leg into a right in, right out kind of approach. So there's no left turn movements, no straight through movements. Um, and then another, you know, big factor of roundabouts is, uh, you know, to accommodate larger vehicles, we have what's called a truck apron. So on the interior portion of the roundabout, there's a, a paved area, um, it's full depth concrete, um, and we typically, you know, design it so that it looks different, so cars don't drive on it, and treat it as a second lane. Uh, but it's there for larger vehicles to maneuver through the roundabout. Uh, the width of those depends on the design vehicles and how big the vehicles were designed in the roundabout for. Um, typically, they're 3 to 15 feet in width. Uh, the ones that we've built so far in our district are about 12 to 14 feet wide. Um, and then that rolled curb to get up on that truck apron, it's about a 2 to 3 inch rolled curb uh, to get up there. Okay, so for some, just some design -ish, uh, considerations uh, for a single lane roundabout, um, again, that maximum entry speed as you enter the roundabout itself is about 20 to 25 miles an hour. Um, we want drivers to drive slow. That's why roundabouts are so much smaller um, <coughs> compared to, if anybody's familiar with the old style traffic circles, those are very large, large radii. Uh, those allow for large, larger vehicle speeds to go through there. We had more issues with those. Uh, roundabouts are much tighter um, to get traffic to slow down. Um, again, that's part of the safety benefits of it. Uh, so for a single lane roundabout, typically we have uh, one lane on each approach entering the roundabout. And then, and then the roundabout itself is a single lane. Uh, typical size of those is between 90 to 180 foot in diameter. Um, so the ones that, again, uh, in the rural area, where you're designing more for larger vehicles, they're more in the 140 to 160 foot range. Um, again, the center island, it's raised. Typically, we put landscaping in the middle. Um, and it's uh, mounded up also in the middle of the area there. So um, to try and make sure people don't drive through the middle of roundabout. 
And then single lane roundabouts can actually handle quite a bit of traffic. They can handle up to approximately 25,000 cars at, through an intersection uh, in a day. So um, it's a very uh, high volume that it can, a single lane can handle. Again, some other uh, things on how to navigate through a roundabout, um, slow down. You know, that's the biggest thing. You know, as you're approaching it, you know, we do the geometrics to try and force to be able to slow down. Um, and it's usually a curved splitter island, uh, curved on the, out, on the uh, outside as well as you get closer to the roundabout itself. Again, that kind of forces traffic to slow down. Uh, all entering vehicles must yield. Again, anybody who's in the roundabout already, they have the right of way. So people uh, approaching have to yield to vehicles in the roundabout itself. And that diagram there in the bottom just kind of shows you, uh, you know, if your typical right turn movement, you take the first exit, you know, straight through movement, you would take the second exit from wherever you entered from. Uh, left turn movement again, third exit. And then these are also good also for U-turns. So if you have an issue where um, maybe a driveway nearby, I know I live, uh, where I live at, we have a roundabout close by and there's a lot of commercial businesses. I've seen, uh, some truck drivers who have a hard time turning left out of the driveway itself, they'll actually turn right, use the roundabout, make a U-turn come back south. So. Uh, some of the benefits of roundabouts, increased traffic safety. I mean, we've seen a huge safety benefit uh, with the roundabouts that we've uh, been building in Ohio, as well as nationwide. Um, uh, increased pedestrian safety. Um, you know, if, there is, if it is in more of an urban area where you have pedestrians, um, you can treat it uh, like a two-stage crossing where you have a refuge area in the middle of a splitter island to give them so they have to deal with one direction of traffic at a time. Uh, traffic calming, again, because you're slowing tra traffic, traffic does have to slow down as they go through the roundabout. Um, this has some calming effects. Uh, again, operational performance, um, you know, it's been Many research studies have been done across the U.S. Uh, show that roundabouts do perform much better than signalized intersections, all-way stops, or two-way stop controlled intersections. Uh, they can handle typically more traffic than those types of intersections can. Um, so the efficiency of getting traffic moving through there is a lot better. Um, some of the other benefits, ongoing operations and maintenance. Again, I'll get into some of some more detail here in the next few slides, but. Uh, you know, there's really not a whole lot of maintenance uh, with the roundabouts. You know, some of the maintenance of the landscaping in the Central Island area, and that's about it. Um, approach road, roadway width. Um, we have some environmental factor benefits. Um, these can be used as aesthetics for communities, especially. They want to create like a gateway kind of thing. Um, and then it helps with uh, land use as well. Highway, so this is based on nationwide uh, data research. Uh, basically, what we're seeing is an 89% reduction in fatal crashes, 76% uh, reduction in injuries, and a 35% reduction in all crashes at intersections where roundabouts have been installed. Um, and then I wanted to, you know, add this because we're really, you know, talking more rural conditions here in Huron County. Um, so at, uh, roundabouts that have been installed along high-speed, two-lane rural highways. Uh, they've had an even better benefit, you know, so they've actually reduced injury crashes by 68% um, and uh, injury crashes by 88%. I mean, overall crashes by 68 and injury by 88%. Um, again, one of the reasons why is what we call a conflict point. So at a typical four-leg intersection, you're going to have 32 conflict points. A conflict point is any place where two vehicles can come together and have a crash. Um, so, you know, at a, again, typical intersection, 32, and a roundabout, you only have eight. Um, and typically, you know, at the roundabout, you have your what we call merging conflict. So you might have a rear end or a side swipe crash. Again, because the speeds are so low at that point, they're typically result in property damage only if there is a crash. Um, at a four-leg intersection, whether it's signalized, stop controlled, four-way stop, um, you still have 32 conflict points. And you know the biggest factor is those what we call crossing conflict points. So you have 16 of those 32 where you're crossing conflicts, which typically result in your angle crashes or your left turn crashes, and those typically seem to be. Uh, our 
more, more severe or fatal injury type crashes. Again, this is just another diagram showing those different types of crashes. Um, so just you know, reiterate a roundabout eliminates those angle and left turn crossing maneuver type crashes. Um, and then the ones that do occur um, are typically your low speed rear ends or side side crashes as you're entering the roundabout, kind of like the picture on the right there shows. Um, again, I just touched on traffic calming. Again, uh, by reducing the vehicle speeds as they approach the roundabouts, um, there's a tra traffic calming effect to that. Uh, operational performance, a lot less delay with roundabouts. Um, you know, especially compared to a signalized intersection or always stop controlled intersection. Um, and really where we see the biggest uh, benefit in operational performance is in your non-peak times. Um, I'm sure you probably all pulled up to a traffic signal and there's no traffic on the other road and you're wondering why you're sitting at a red light, you know, so um, with the roundabout, you saw a constant movement, so. Um, the ongoing operations and maintenance, again, very little uh, maintenance with the roundabout. Um, <coughs> you know, it's a traffic signal, you have a lot of electrical and equipment, hardware needs that uh, typically need to be updated every 10 to 15 years. Uh, poles would have to be updated every 25 to 30 years. Um, again, with the roundabout, very uh, little maintenance uh, cost for that. Then for the approach roadway width, um, with the roundabout, you know, most of your impacts that are going to be right at the intersection. That's where the widening would have to occur for the roundabout itself. Uh, typically when we get into a signalized intersection or sometimes unsignalized intersections where we need to build turn lanes, right turn lanes, left turn lanes, uh, those can get pretty lengthy. To, you know, a time is 600, 800 feet in length. So those have a lot lar larger impacts on the roadway itself and widening. So again, uh, environmental factors, um, since we're reducing the number of stops, you know, that helps with fuel efficiency, uh, the noise concerns, um, so there's a reduction in noise, people are, you know, don't have to stop like they would at an all-way stop or a two-way stop control, or, you know, sometimes at a signal they have the red light, uh, it's less time spent sitting there idling, um, then the aesthetics, again, you know, some of the ones that we've built in our district, you know, the communities have used them like as a gateway into their community so <clears throat> and uh so public perception just want to touch on this i mean uh, you know this is pretty common not only for ohio but state you know nationwide uh, public perception is very negative you know at the beginning uh during the planning stages um until that roundabout gets opened up and then afterwards you know we've seen a very positive uh feedback from the public once the roundabout's open, they have a chance to see what it looks like and drive through it, um, see how well it operates. And these are just uh, some of the sources from the data, Federal Highway, uh, from this, most of it, uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation. That's the, from that. well, these, the whole reason that we have the Safe Community Coalition is to address those problems. Again, just like um, um, Julie and they're all talking about they need your feedback nothing set in stone this, this isn't even slated it's basically this is a public forum for you guys to actually start giving in uh, your opinion as to what should be done how it should be done if it should be done um, but this whole the whole reason why this actually started is because the number of fatalities that we've had at 601 and 18 with the state highway patrol the Huron county sheriff's office has had problems at specifically at that intersection um, so again, this is just the beginning stages of what we're trying to accomplish, what it is that the public wants to do, and you guys giving us your feedback in the direction that we should go uh, along with ODOT and the Safe Communities Coalition. So again, nothing set in stone. This is the beginning process of it. So your input is being heard, uh, and they're gonna formulate a, pan, uh, formulate a plan on how best to deal with that intersection. So uh, again, that's why they're saying none of this stuff is uh, being planned, nothing's being set in stone. This is the beginning stages of it. So your input is being heard and they're gonna make decisions based off that input. Again, if it decides to move forward, again, ODOT's gonna come out and they're gonna start their process on, on how to best deal with that situation. So 
Um, again, the whole how this whole thing started is just because of all the bad intersections. Uh, again, that one in particular where people have lost their life because uh, if anyone knows the area, 601 is the is the cut through. Instead of going through the city of Norwalk, people go through 601, take 18. If you're not familiar with the area, you don't stop at that intersection. So people get T-boned, unfortunately. Uh, over the last several years, people have lost their life there. So, um, again, that's why this whole this whole process has started. Hopefully, that answers your question. Yeah, um, I, I hope that the state will consider a traffic light because, again, safety is key. And you know, one accident is too many. But I, I don't know how Mr. Bader feels, but I know from some other business owners and myself that a light would regulate because, sadly, we both know that or not both, everybody here knows that most people don't honor courtesy and a lot of other things. And uh, sadly, most people are only about themselves when they drive or in different other areas of their life. So that's my take on it, and I won't say any more. Well, my question, or I guess I'm not a question, it's just basically a statement is, no matter what you people do, everybody's going to go. Can't satisfy everybody, no matter what's true. Yeah. Kind of like what he said about wear and tear. I work for Old Beast, so I see it all the time. Uh, we did say that one down in uh, it was in West Virginia. They just did it two years later. We had to redo it all over wear and tear because of semis. And you said that's a low maintenance with roundabouts, but I don't really believe that because I see it all the time at work. You got low boys coming in to hit the curbs, and they just destroy them. And that one in West Virginia was done two years and we had to redo the whole thing. I can't speak to that one or how it was designed or anything, so get back there. So in your engineering of the truck apron and a roundabout, do you have the latitude to adjust the height of that truck apron and the <coughs> slope to get up onto it based on uh, the particular traffic. So if we have a lot of lar large heavy loads and we have a lot of low boys in the area, which we do, is there an ability to make an adjustment in your engineering for that in a roundabout? Yes, there is. Yeah, like I said, that, that two to three inches is a couple uh, raised or rolled curve. Um, yeah, it, it could be, you know, down to as minimum of a one inch. Uh, so that capacity to make it lower and even increase the angle of ascent so that, that there wouldn't be that wear and tear does exist. Yeah, the slope of the truck paper itself is pretty set, you know, because we need to get drainage. So we typically design these so that everything drains to the outside of the roundabout. Uh, so the slope itself of the truck apron, but if you're talking about the slope of the curb, because the road curb is typically, it's a two to three inch height over like eight inches so it's a very gradual um, but so we that curbing itself we can adjust now the slope of the truck apron um, again this it's not a whole lot of wiggle room with that because of drainage we want to make sure everything drains uh, from the inside towards the outside around the about yeah yeah i mentioned that i mean i came in here for 11 days a couple months ago and i saw these truck aprons if they do have and they do have a slope but I didn't see this two to three inch curve anywhere. So is there a flexibility in that? Could, could that curve be reduced down lower or limit be eliminated? Well, we don't want to eliminate it because uh, otherwise cars will use it as another lane. Um, so we want to discourage vehicles from using it as a, another lane in the roundabout trying to force, because it's pretty wide in there. So the, the lane, the travel lane itself is 16 to 18 feet wide. A typical lane on a state highway is 11 to 12 feet. So your travel lane already is pretty wide through the roundabout. And then you add in a 12, 14 foot truck apron, and now you're talking, you know, 30 feet or more. Um, so cars will, at that point, try to use it. And I was in Europe this summer too, and it's crazy, you know, and, and that's what they do. There is no, you're right, there is no um, reveal, and I didn't actually see any truck aprons where I was at on their roundabouts, but um, it's amazing. You go from a two lane approach roadway and then they make four or five lanes in the roundabout. You know, they're just all over the place. Uh, so that's what we're trying to avoid. You know, we don't want to have vehicles trying to pass other cars inside the roundabout. Um, that creates safety issues. Um, so we want to make sure that there 
is some type of a raise, <coughs> uh, but we can't minimize. 